L.J. Smith, leading the stair parts industry into the future with a refined product line of handrail fittings, balusters, newels, and handrails designed to make installations sturdier, easier, and more efficient while beating most building code regulations. Let's start with the handrail fittings. The frustrations begin early in the process of installing a stairway. Should you use a one rise or a two rise? Do you need a left or a right hand gooseneck? If you have the right parts on the job, aren't you tired of installing fittings by using the time consuming system of rail bolts and plugs? LJ Smith proudly introduces Connecticut, our patented line of fitting components, which offers versatility, quicker installation, and added strength over conventional fittings. This product will give you versatility by allowing you to construct a left or right hand fitting from the same part. Parts can be used to make up a variety of fitting combinations. The seven new Connecticut fitting components will replace all of the 26 former gooseneck fittings. The biggest advantage will be in the ease of assembly. Most joint connections are made on top of the rail system for easier access. All joints are concealed which eliminates unsightly nails and plugs. The assembly hardware is included with each component and is easy to use. The Connecticut hardware used to assemble the fittings gives greater strength and allows trim carpenters to build a sturdier system. Throughout this video, we'll be doing a side-by-side -side time comparison of Connecticut versus the former gooseneck assembly. Let's start with a look at the way you used to receive a gooseneck fitting with an unattached up easing and going to the right or left. With Connecticut, you'll simply need to order an up easing, a rail drop, and the fitting component. You'll make the determination at the job site on using the fitting as a right hand or a left hand. Let's look at the basic steps for installing Connecticut using these components. As we check in on our comparison, you'll see for yourself the tremendous time savings on the job site. The first step is to mark and cut the quarter turn with cap. This eliminates the cutting of a cumbersome gooseneck assembly on your miter saw. Remove the top lid and attach the rail drop. Using the enclosed template, mark and drill the rail drop to accept a 5 16 inch lag bolt. This is the first of only three holes needed for the entire assembly. You'll never have to change your drill bit with Connecticut. Remove the bottom filler piece from the up easing and attach it to the rail drop. Using the same template, mark and drill the rake rail to accept 5 16 inch hardware. This is the second of only three holes for the entire assembly. Attach the up easing to the rake rail. Replace the bottom filler piece in the up easing. Using a socket wrench on the lag bolt provided, tighten the quarter turn onto the newel post. This unique method is much stronger than the former gooseneck installation. It holds the fitting in place while other connections are being made. Mark and cut the level rail. Using the same template, mark and drill the end of the level rail to accept the hardware. This is the third and final hole needed for the Connecticut assembly. We never changed our drill bit. Attach the level rail to the end of the quarter turn. Take note of the tremendous advantage of being able to drop this into place and make all connections from the top of the rail. Replace the top lid of the quarter turn. This entire process should take half the time it takes to install the goosenecks using conventional methods. We'll be discussing the rest of our product line refinements, but we'll be checking in from time to time on our fittings comparison. Changes in the industry over the years have created problems in trying to achieve accurate takeoffs and proper installation. Some of the changes include relocation of rail height measuring points, increased rail heights themselves, and a sphere rule which changed from 6 inch to 4 inch. Building code authorities are beginning to enforce these and other new building codes, which obviously creates a problem for the trim carpenter. Besides the difficulty in installation, the former line of balusters are also often unattractive. They don't allow for consistent block alignment underneath the handrail. This becomes increasingly obvious with square top balusters. Looking at our example, note that the traditional 34 inch baluster is not long enough in many cases when some model code rail heights are enforced. L.J. Smith proudly presents a revised line of balusters to resolve most of these current problems. The revised line of square top balusters are designed to allow for consistent block alignment underneath the handrail, regardless of the rake angle, rail height, or turning pattern. Next, we want to eliminate the confusion in all the baluster lengths to choose from, so we now take you from this to this. Three lengths that will cover nearly any situation you may confront. 
Let's check in on our fittings comparison. We're at the 433 mark in the former way, still drilling the rake rail for the rail bolt, while Connecticut is attaching the up easing to the rake rail. We'll keep checking on their progress. Back to our balusters. We'll be removing the pins on the bottom of the balusters, but we'll include an optional pin easy that will be loosely inserted into the bottom of each baluster. Balusters will be pre-drilled in order to receive either the pin easy or 5 16 by 2 1⁄2 inch dowel screws. The pin easy provides for traditional installation methods of 3 quarter inch diameter holes and glue or construction adhesive. This method, however, doesn't represent any improvement in stairway installation methods. We recommend dowel screws which are much sturdier and can turn a two-man job into a one-man job. When combined with our dowel runner and dowel fast tap, this becomes a quicker, sturdier rail system and is an improvement in traditional stairway installation methods. Length will be easily adjusted at the bottoms, which will automatically allow the turned area to flow with the handrail. Time to check in on our fittings comparison. We're at the 526 mark, and the old way has us installing the rail bolt between the up easing and the rake rail, while Connecticut has us placing the bottom filler piece in the up easing. Connecticut is way ahead of the gooseneck assembly. Now some more good news. This time we're looking at our line of newel posts. Industry standard newels don't work for some common rise run situations unless the installer varies handrail heights or shifts handrail center lines so that parts will fit together. Industry standard newels don't have long enough blocks for some applications at current handrail heights. Overall lengths are not consistent for all turning profiles. Newels with dowel pins are difficult to install properly and provide no flexibility in achieving required handrail heights. LJ Smith introduces Newel Post Revisions which will help you install a sturdy system efficiently while meeting most model codes. All turning profiles will have consistent turning lengths and overall measurements. All over the post starting newels will now be called utility newels. We will be removing the dowel pins at the bottoms and replace them with the 3007 hardware which will be included with each newel. Because of today's preferences for installation, newel drops won't be included in the box with the newel but will still be available. Let's check back in on our fittings project. We're at the 648 point and the former method is trimming the drop on the gooseneck while Connecticut is already drilling the level rail. Now a few more things to make your job easier. In order to comply with more code restrictions, 6210 handrail dimensions have been changed from 2 and 3 eighths by 2 and 27 30 seconds to 2 and 3 eighths by 2 and 5 eighths. And a new handrail profile designed to comply with most model codes has been added to the product offering. It's called LJ6109. For carpeted stairways, the false tread kits will consist of a tread, riser, and pre-mitered molding. The kit will accommodate any open right hand, left hand, or closed wall situation. Even if you do get the proper parts on the job, getting them installed has always been tough. The kit solves both of these problems and therefore can be installed more efficiently than before. The final change will be the offering of two universal rosettes with dimensions being 4 and 7 8 inch and 4 and 7 16 inch respectively. These will accommodate all handrail profiles and still be attractive. Well, one last check on our fittings project. We've reached the 809 mark and the old way is drilling another rail bolt hole while our Connecticut guy has just gone home. Connecticut is the clear winner. The refinements in our product offering which you've just seen come as a result of listening to you. We understand the difficulties you've been experiencing with the application and installation of the industry standard line. Thanks for helping us help you. Please contact us if you have any further comments or suggestions. By the way, the former gooseneck assembly was finished 11 and a half minutes later.